Welcome to AgriVista, where we explore topics in agriculture. I'm Josh Bottegas. We're very excited to kick off our new series, Beyond the Field, a compilation of episodes to emphasize the agriculture industry, well, beyond the field. When thinking of agriculture, many typically envision a farmer stereotype, either in the field or in livestock pens. Yet men and women spend entire careers in this industry without even living on a farm. So how can this be? Like any well-rounded discipline, branches emerge to specialize and utilize a core product produced. On this episode, we'll dive into one of those branches and explore the opportunities available beyond the field. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We're moving people back to this community. What we're trying to do is bring added value back. It is our goal to turn a truck from the time that it comes in through the entrance till the time it leaves the exit in less than eight minutes. It's really a reinvestment or a reinvigoration of rural Iowa. We're taking soybeans that used to go export and be processed in another country, and we're going to process them right here. All of this and more coming up on AgriVista. So I think it's kind of a benefit for Northwest Iowa in general. It's no secret the state of Iowa is known for its corn production. In fact, according to the USDA's Iowa Crop Production Report for 2022, 2.48 billion bushels of corn for grain were harvested. However, soybeans also play a key part of Iowa's crop production, with 587 million bushels harvested in 2022. While many know Iowa corn is utilized primarily for ethanol and livestock feed purposes, this leaves others curious as to what benefits soybeans bring. Besides adding crucial nitrogen to the soil that corn thrives from, in what ways are soybean seeds used? Just outside of Storm Lake, construction is well underway on a plant able to answer that very question. Just over three miles west of Storm Lake, construction is well underway on a new bean crush plant that looks to localize the processing of soybeans. Sitting on a plot of 440 acres, the Platinum Crush crush plant has been under construction since mid-2022, with efforts currently focused on fine details in the bean preparation and extraction buildings, concentrated efforts have been made to get local farmer input. So one of the things that we heard uh, a lot about uh, as this project was being developed was farmers uh, were tired of waiting in lines to uh, dump their beans. It is our goal to turn a truck from the time that it comes in through the entrance till the time it leaves the exit in less than eight minutes. With two dump pits capable of processing 30,000 bushels apiece, six steel silos bring storage capacity up to 5 million bushels, enough to feed the plant for 40 days. When the switches are flipped and the plant is finally up and running, the beans will be fed into preparation. So in prep, this is kind of really the first step of the process. So the beans come in, we clean them, they go through some screeners to remove any of the field trash. We crack them to dehull them. Um, you can kind of see behind me there's some cracking mills and then the flakers are kind of right behind me here. So all that, that milling really happens here in the prep building. Once flaked, the processes transitions to the second building, extraction. Well, here we bring those flakes into the extractor, which is this large loop vessel beside me, and uh, it washes it with solvent, uh, a solvent called hexane, and that removes the oil. So it washes the oil out of the soybean flakes. Through this process, after going through some distillation columns and evaporating the hexane, crude oil remains. With year-round operations, the demand for soybeans from Platinum Crush hopes to entice area farmers into growing more of this crop. We're taking soybeans that used to go export uh, and be processed in another country, and we're going to process them right here where that makes jobs for the people in this area. We're going to, you know, with this plant here, boost the price of soybeans a little bit. As research reveals advancements in technology to maximize crop usage, soybeans have emerged as a new answer to green energy. The industry is really going through some growth, and a lot of that is being generated by this renewable diesel market that's kind of come to. You know, we'll be able to source the beans locally, be able to sell the product locally as well, so I think it's kind of a benefit for Northwest Iowa in general. With a projected startup in the second quarter of 2024, Platinum Crush aims to elevate an already thriving agricultural industry in Buena Vista County. For AgriVista on BVTV, I'm Amelia Jacobs. I'm excited to now be joined by Jay Nelson, the Director of Trade and Risk Management at Platinum Crush. So Jay, you and I were just first start, started to talk a little bit, and I think you mentioned you've been in the industry for 31 years. So. Yeah. 
Kind of talk me through what's your career been like? Um, it's interesting that uh, you know your your uh, opening commentary that uh, I was able to listen to talked about you know, beyond the field, right? And when I grew up, um, you know, agriculture ended at the local co-op when I dumped a load of corn or soybeans at the at the uh, pit and drove away. But uh, went to college. Uh, I grew up in the '80s. Uh, opportunities to stay home and farm weren't really available, so. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, go to college and um, I started work with ADM out of college. And so that really um, put me on a path uh, that I found you know, immensely enjoyable. I'm a grain merchandiser is you know, how I uh, you know, cut my teeth. Um, have managed facilities anywhere from uh, the, the Mississippi River to uh, um, Kansas City Board of Trade, now back to Iowa. So um, it's just a career path that I found extremely challenging. and. You know, every place I've been, I've gotten to deal with farmers, and I find that very rewarding. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned here with Beyond the Field and stuff, grain merchandising and mm -hmm. stuff. Could you talk to me a little bit about what that is and then also what your role is here with Platinum Crush? Yeah, so grain merchandising is, in essence, uh, you know, trading the, the raw commodities. If you think about a plant uh, like uh, the Platinum Crush plant, uh, its chief ingredient, chief input is soybeans. So merchandising soybeans basically involves... Um, you know, understanding the dynamics that establish price on that soybean and being able to originate that soybean, you know, for us to crush at its most economical value. You know, something that's mutually beneficial for both Platinum Crush and the producer. Yeah. So looking at the progress of the bean crush plant mm -hmm. here with Platinum Crush, I kind of want to take a step back and just ask you, why is this plant even needed in the first place? Well, I think need is a, a function of demand, right? Demand. Uh, uh, something is uh, you know, driving the investment in this particular industry. Um, soy crush is, is a mature industry. It's been around since the 1970s, really. The process hasn't changed. It's become more efficient, but it really hasn't changed. What's driven is the demand for the products that the soy crush industry makes, namely soybean oil in this case. Um, as we move to a, an environment where clean fuels become uh, a priority, low carbon intensity uh, fuels. The, the demand uh, for their feedstocks, in this case soybean oil, um, has really opened up a window of margin in our business that has enticed investment. Um, if you look at the soy crush industry, 91% of the industry is controlled by five players. Um, it's really been closed to outside investment for a long time. and. Um, the demand brought on by renewable diesel in particular, and eventually maybe sustainable aviation fuel, has really opened up the, the window for people to invest and, and to bring value-added agriculture into West Central Iowa. Yeah, now you mentioned about the soybean oil here, and I know mm -hmm. when a lot of people think about soybeans, they think about the plant and adding nitrogen to the soil for the, mm -hmm. for the corn production, because that's what Iowa's known for. But what are some of the uses of that soybean itself? Yeah, really, you know, the, the funny thing is, is that, uh, you know, when my, my dad was growing up, they used to make soybean hay and feed the plant to the cow, and uh, we really didn't know what to do with it. And... Um, the innovation, the ability to fracture that soybean into its component products. Uh, a bushel of soybeans weighs about 60 pounds. We make 44 pounds of soybean meal, which is a high protein, uh, nutrient dense uh, animal feed component. We make about 11 and a half uh, pounds of soybean oil that I mentioned, and then about four pounds of soybean holes. And the holes are what we crack off the outside. They're also a, a very valuable livestock feed component. So when you look at the the, the total component of a soybean, very, very little waste. We're turning that soybean into uh, three you know, products that dominate the majority of that, uh, that bushel's weight. Yeah, and now even with looking at the progress of construction, even looking at the plant itself outside of Stone mm -hmm. Lake here, the first thing that strikes you is the pure magnitude of yeah. it. It is a huge plant. So mm -hmm. what type of opportunities is this gonna bring to the Storm Lake area? Well, obviously um, you, you look at the construction crews that you see every day and uh, I think in my tenure here, we've averaged probably 450 people on site every day. Those are people uh, living in our communities, paying rent, you know, eating at the restaurants, uh, buying, you know, various sundries at the stores, you know. So there's an immediate impact, if you will, from uh, the construction crew that comes in. Fast forward to next spring when we hope to be operational, we should have 60 to 70 full-time employees 
high paying jobs, jobs that uh, generate uh, a tax base. We're moving communities, or we're moving people back to this community. I can think of four people currently on our payroll that are uh, Northwest Iowa natives. This was the vehicle that brought them back to this community. They're bringing their families back to this community. So it's really a reinvestment or a reinvigoration of uh, rural Iowa through value-added agriculture. Absolutely. Bringing communities back together, rebuilding uh, these smaller communities around this area. I know mm -hmm. the plant itself is situated between here, Storm Lake, and Alta and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but specifically with this county, with Buena Vista County, just by nature, I think it's been very agriculturally focused mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there's Tyson here on the livestock end of things. But now we bring in Platinum Crush for on the crop production side of things. So how will this continue to strengthen the agriculture industry in this area? Well, uh, you, you are correct. Uh, Buena Vista County is one of the highest uh, producing counties in the state of Iowa. If you look at the metrics, uh, I believe we're now onto what we call CSR2. It's a top uh, five county in the state of Iowa in terms of its CSR rating. So some of the most productive soil in the, uh, on, on the face of the planet. Um, for the longest time, uh, the vast majority of soybeans grown in northwestern Iowa, about 50% of those soybeans uh, were, were, were pushed to the export market. So if you look at, uh, we go back to the merchandising question, right? Um, exports are generally uh, uh, a world clearing level type mechanism. So your pricing of your soybeans in northwestern Iowa are is basically being predicated upon the low value or the lowest value for those numbers. What we're trying to do is bring added value back to here. We're gonna increase the value of soybeans in Northwestern Iowa. Some are in favor, some not in favor, uh, but you know, I think that's a win-win environment for everyone involved. Yeah, now kind of let's get back to the plant itself a mm -hmm. little bit. So could you kind of give us a little nutshell overview, walking us through yeah. how the soybean seed gets from in the field through the final product that you guys produce. Yeah, you obviously see the big combines rolling through and you know, um, everybody's got a grain cart, puts it in a semi, brings it. Platinum Crush is gonna dump that soybean. You see the big shiny silver bins. We have over five million bushels of soybean space. Should be able to dump 600 trucks pretty easily at our peak. Now that soybean, once it's in our, our facility, to go to the processing segment, it's basically gonna be elevated through the system and it's going to be broken down to its components. So the first thing we do is we talked about the soybean holes. We're gonna roll that soybean uh, and, and separate that hole from the bean. Then the meat of the bean is run through what we call a cracker and we go from a full bean to a half. Then we repeat the process. We go from a half to a quarter and then that soybean is then flaked. And that flake, if you can imagine the thickness of the size of a business card, that's about how thin we make that flake. And then that, that design is to rupture the oil cells in that particular flake, makes that oil available. Remember we talked about what, what the demand source was that was spurring this investment? We wanna capture as much oil as we can. So now that flake is ready to have the oil extracted. It goes into the extraction process and we use a, a, a petrochemical called hexane, which adheres to that oil and pulls the oil out of that flake. Then we basically start to uh, uh, remove the hexane back so we're left with the uh, individual, you know, the, the oil and the flakes that are left over what we turn into soybean meal. So if you remember early on in the process, we've separated the hole that goes into our loose holes or our soy hole uh, products. We take those flakes, we grind them and that turns into our soybean meal. And then obviously the oil that we have left is our crude soybean oil. It's not what you see in the grocery store, the nice pretty clear stuff, but that is the, how all oil starts out. It starts in a crude form. It, it definitely intense process. It kind of sounds like a lot of moving pieces there, but you can see why with the yeah. size of that plant out there. Yeah, it's um, it sits on 450 acres. It's a massive site, right? And we have 51,000 feet of railroad uh, track. You know, that's 10 miles if you guys uh, do your quick math. So it does sit on a pretty large, uh, uh, large piece of property. Yeah. Now, before you go, we do have a viewer who actually sent in a quick question here and they're wondering, so this kind of goes back to what we first started talking about. So they're wondering, or they're saying that soybeans naturally produce less bushels per acre when compared to corn. Mm -hmm. So what's the benefits of then planting soybeans? Well, you talked about it right at the get go. Uh, Rotationally based agriculture is good for the soil, it's healthy for the soil. So finding that crop uh, uh, to give uh, you know, continuous corn a break is, is a natural remedy, right? Um, yes, you produce 
one third uh, of uh, the bushels that you do on, a, on an acre of corn, but it's also less intensive. You're not putting extra fertilizer down. You're not putting uh, um, other nutrients down, right? The input cost, the cost of uh, planting that soybean is significantly less. So it's all about return per acre, right? And so there are times in my career, 31 years, where soybeans have been the better returning uh, or more profitable crop, even though you only have the, the smaller bushels. So today I would tell you, if you look at current market dynamics, the value of soybeans in relationship to the price of corn is increasing. The industry is responding. Price is responding to try and entice more soybean acres as we move into next spring. Yeah, well, definitely an exciting time to be part of the agriculture industry here, specifically within Buena Vista County. So, Jay, we want to thank you for taking oh, the yeah. time to be here with uh, us today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Josh. Yeah. As for you, thank you for tuning in, and we hope you caught a glimpse at what life is like beyond the field. Agriculture is much more than life on the farm, with countless jobs and career opportunities waiting to refine products for consumer use. I'm Josh Wittigas, and you've been watching the Beyond the Field series on AgriVista. We'll see you next time.